Live from Gillette Stadium in Foxboro, Massachusetts, it's The Cube. At the VTUG Winter Warmer 2015. Now, here is your host, Stu Miniman. Welcome back to theCUBE. I'm Stu Miniman with Wikibon. SiliconANGLE Media's The Cube here at the VTUG Winter Warmer 2015. Love to go to all the enterprise shows, help extract the signal from the noise. At this show, talking a lot about virtualization cloud. Going to talk a little bit more about storage today and uh, the, the future of IT. Joining me for Definitely. this segment, a uh, guy I've known for a lot of years, yeah. and, and somehow I'm in shock, it's first time on the Cube. Jeremiah Dooley, cloud architect with SolidFire. Jeremiah? Yeah. Thanks for making the trip up here Absolutely. to New England in the cold. It is and cold. Yeah. Uh, That's for sure. It's actually uh, my second time that I got to be on theCUBE. I was on theCUBE back uh, in 2010 as a customer. Wow. Was that VMworld? It was. Yeah, VMworld, VMworld 2010. 2010. Wow, I can picture it now actually. That was a long the, the, time ago. The, the beard's like a little yeah. bit more fuller yeah. and uh, stuff yep. like that. But yeah, it, yep. it's amazing. We, we've done, I think somebody said it, we were north of 6,000 interviews, yep. but uh, that VMworld 2010, I mean, that was early days. You yes, were like was. one of the pioneers on the program. I'm happy to stamp the multiple visitor badge. All right, so, 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 so great. So welcome back. So you sure. know the format, you, you, you know, yep. especially somebody I've known for so many years. We just want to continue the conversations we've had. For those people that don't follow you on the Twitters, don't read your blogs, haven't watched your career, sure. give us a little bit about your background and then what you do at that solid sure. fire. So I've, I've kind of been all over the place. Um, I started on the customer side, uh, primarily in healthcare, and then moved over to a service provider based out of Charlotte, and that was the, the customer that I was on the Cube with in 2010. And my job there was building out the VMware, their public cloud platform. And so that was kind of my introduction to the virtualized environment, my introduction to uh, the industry. When they got acquired, I moved over to VCE and spent probably the better part of four years uh, over there, ending up in the office of the CTO talking with customers about how you know, infrastructure makes platforms and platforms run workloads and let's talk about workloads. Um, so I've been with SolidFire since April and we're kind of doing the same thing, right? Uh, SolidFire's interesting because they are an all flash array company, but they really, they operate like and they, they uh, go to market much like a software development company does. And so uh, it really lends itself well to that kind of infrastructure is boring. Let's, let's work on the, on the applications and the workloads and the platforms that are going to run them. Um, and it's been it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, you know, Jeremiah, I, I love just give a little insight to, to some folks. Uh, like on Twitter, you, you and I go back and forth yeah. on this. It's like I'm an infrastructure guy by you know, it's been yeah. most of my career. I'm, yeah. I'm a hardware guy by training. I mean, yeah. I love a good design sheet metal. That's right. And uh, you, you know, we, we, we and love uh, um, you, you know, uh, gosh, I'm uh, Andy Bechtelstein. Right. You know, does <laughs> phenomenal layouts of, yeah. of boards and everything, yeah. and it's the stuff that just makes you know somebody yeah. like me go like, wow, this yeah. is cool. I look at what Amazon's doing yep. and you know, working on the power supplies and I'm like, there's a lot of awesome stuff that can happen well, in none hardware. Of none of it's but easy, yes. right? I mean, none of it's easy and all of it's important and you can't have a good platform that provides the availability and performance of the applications that the customer wants without having the hardware pieces that make it up. So I don't minimize the, I, I mean, particularly some of the stuff that they're doing down there at the low level, um, reinventing the server as an, as an, as a, platform or as an object is, is incredibly um, important work that we're doing, but for the vast majority of enterprise users who only care how fast the application is and yes. whether or not they can log into it, those, those details are now and kind of always have been boring. And so the, it's fun to sit in the middle and understand and respect what has to go on on the hardware side and understanding what goes into building a distributed storage array, but then how do we translate that value into something that the end users, something that the administrators, something that the virtualization admins are going to be able to immediately immediately see and take advantage of in a real way. And largely, today, that's a software question yeah. and not a hardware question. Yeah, uh, so, so, so no doubt. We've been watching Solid Fire since it was, was yep. in stealth. Uh, David Florey, the CTO of Wikibon, um, you know, wrote a, a big right, piece. 
talking about uh, how new architecture should be built. And uh, you know, Solid Fire scored very well in there. What, what I want to ask you, Jeremiah, is in the industry, we built up a whole industry around storage. And there are storage buyers, and there are storage administrators, and their job is they look so much at the speeds and feeds and price per gigabyte and how many IOPS they can get right there. Um, it's got to be a challenge because you guys, as you said, focusing on the data services and the applications. You know, walk us through. You know, do you talk to the same storage guys? Do you have to go upstream? Where does that live? Well, what we know, and and what you know, having seen the, the industry the way I have, is that Flash broke everything. Right, the flash. When we put flash in, in any part of the infrastructure as a as a cache, as a tier, as a platform, flash broke everything that we use traditionally in the storage environment. It broke cost per gig. It broke how do we manage services or how do we manage um, you know the data centers. It broke all of the calculations that we had, both on the selling side and on the consuming side. So we talked to the same people. What we're trying to do is explain to them that the questions you have to ask, the questions you have to ask and understand from an application standpoint, but the questions that you have to ask of the vendors and what they're capable of delivering to you have pretty significantly changed. So um, I don't know that it's necessarily been a different conversation or a conversation with a dip different group of people, but there's an immense amount of inertia, right? And, and you and I know that the people who benefit most from the inertia are also going to the people, be the people who are slower to adopt some of the new technologies. And so, um, you know, helping them get over that, we saw it with converged infrastructure, there was inertia slowing that down. It's not any different with Flash. I mean, the, 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 the onus is on us. We need to show use cases, we need to show value, we need to show economics, we need to start to paint a vision of the future of where that platform's going. And if we do that well, the use cases and the customers will follow it. All right, so, so Jeremy, I got to put you on the spot. You brought up convergence. Sure. And you lived at VCE. I did. VCE's been going gangbusters. Absolutely. I mean, you know, they, 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 they get a lot of stones thrown at them by a sure. lot of people, sure. but, you know, they're over a $2 billion run rate right now. Yep. They're doing quite well. Yep. Solid Fire doesn't ignore converged infrastructure, but what, do you, what, do you, what is your, your viewpoint? You do some interesting things uh, with it. So uh, it was actually what I came to Solid Fire to do was to build them a uh, reference architecture program. And we've partnered with uh, Dell and Red Hat on the OpenStack side and Cisco and VMware. And our job is not, we don't sell converged infrastructure, right? We're not going to do, um, I mean, VC set that bar for converged infrastructure really high, both from a what customers expect and what it costs to support it. Um, our job is to make the process of acquiring all flash storage and using it to solve workload and use case problems as seamless as possible. So um, the reference architectures are great. We see lots of customers that are consuming pieces of them, particularly the ones that are that tie off directly to a transition from disk to all flash or from fiber channel to iSCSI or any of the transitions that customers are making in addition to acquiring solid fire storage. Um, the content library that that reference architecture has allowed us to build uh, in the last eight months right, has been really fantastic. All right, so, so Jeremiah, you, you talk to a lot of users out there. How are they doing with understanding kind of this wave of flash? Do they, you know, what I said four years ago, people thought, you know, they just heard flash and they didn't understand whether it was a single drive in, you know, a VMAX or if it was Fusion IO. And there's a lot of different pieces of the market and boy, there's a huge spectrum of what it can do out there. You know, how are we, everybody I think understands they need to use it, but you know, how's the maturity and adoption out there that you see? So the presentation that I gave here today was about the evolution of the data services side. And there's a first generation of data services that um, is, it's me trying to bring a little bit of order to the chaos of the things that are out there. Um, the first generation of data services to me is dedupe compression, cloning and snapshots, right? All as metadata functions, not as actual block copies. Um, and I think customers understand how those services impact their economics, right? They are using those data services to translate this new scary thing into economical 
metrics that they can use to measure it against on the spinning disk side. So I think there's a there's a level of understanding there right, that is um, uh, rudimentary, uh, but is uh, consistent across sure all of the all flash array vendors. It doesn't matter whether you're pure or extreme uh, I/O. Everybody has kind of that baseline of services. Uh, I think where we are trying hard, and me personally am trying hard to help customers understand is the data services that go on top of that are the ones that don't just focus on economics. They focus on operational efficiency. They focus on how do we tie off with integrations into the platforms, the open stacks and VM worlds and cloud stacks of the world. And ultimately they become the only real differentiator that one flash provider has from another. Right, there are architectural issues. Do you scale up, do you scale out? How do you handle block sizes? Like there are lots of minutia there, but at the end of the day, it's how does your architecture facilitate your right, ability to use metadata in a way that helps solve like problems as far up the stack as possible. And I think that um, to internal to the vendors, right? we understand and that that's kind of the next January direction that we have to push uh, customers and what it is that customers are doing. But I would say that by and large, we're at the beginning the of that process, not at the James. end. All right, so Jeremiah, in our wrap-up today, we're sure. going to talk to John MacArthur, okay. and he wrote a blog post Thank about a week ago. Uh, you're, you're a blogger, maybe you ran right. across it, but he talked about the theory of one, and especially for a startup, what he talked about James. was you need to have kind of that, you know, that elevator pitch is the old way of thing, or in our world, kind of that, that tweet. What differentiates me? What sets me apart? What should I think about? What's the theory of one for solid fire? QoS. Yeah. Now, tomorrow, going forward, I think that Solid Fire is one of the only storage vendors, all flash or not, that has done a great job of defining what metadata can be and how it can be used from an operational standpoint. So the ability to say volume at a time, regardless of what application you're running on top of it, we're going to give you the ability to guarantee a minimum limit a maximum and allow a burst of IOPS so that we can run as many workloads as possible on a single array so that we can make the Tetris pieces as varied as possible to be as efficient as we can in filling that array up. That's, I think that right now, uh, both from a solid fire perspective but also from an industry perspective, that's the first of the really differentiated meta service the you know, metadata based services, and yeah, that's really where uh, Solid Fire shines. So, yeah, great, great points, Jeremiah. I think back to when I first joined Wikibon, almost five years ago now, metadata was just one of the things that David Floyer beat on and said, this is the future of storage. And everybody came back and they were like, they didn't understand it, and it was way too manual. I mean, to, to give users kind of the example is, think if you've ever had a Flickr account, it's one thing to just put your photos up there, but oh, I want to tag them and I want to put them in folders, as opposed to like Facebook. Yep. Facebook auto-recognizes the faces now and puts them into like yep. location right. and everything well, like that. It's on the that phone. That metadata is built in, so yep. have we come a long way on metadata? You know, where, what's on the, the back of that? end, yeah. holy cow. Yeah. So it's, um, uh, Dave Wright did a great um, storage field day presentation oh, at the middle, middle of last year where he went through and showed kind of the architectural comparisons okay. between pure and solid fire and extreme IO. And one of the things that that went over was data placement and metadata management and how those work. And it was interesting to hear him say that solid fire metadata is one of the ways that we use to drive garbage collection, right? And if we were to go back five years, and you were to Set try to explain to one, that we're going to use two, metadata two. in a block storage array wow. to do Set a to garbage one, collection two, process one, in order to streamline what it is that we're doing from a utilization go. standpoint, like that's, this, that that would amazing. have been one of those things that we just really wouldn't have is looked at as a viable one, usage one, for it, right? So we've come, um, I think we've come a long way in what it's metadata can cool. be used for, and frankly, I think we're probably limited more by what is the what is the market willing to see metadata as a um, as a useful solution for than we are what could we do with it. I mean, you know, the the metadata is only as All useful, right, much like the tagging and Flickr, 
it can be as detailed as you want it to be, provided you have the resources, right, the time and ability and knowledge to be able to go through and do all of that tagging. I think we're there, particularly solid fire from an architecture standpoint. Now it's just a matter of how can we exploit that to best value to solve the use cases and the problems that the customers are having. All right, so, so Jeremiah, I want to kind of switch topics a sure. little bit. Um, I saw you present uh, once uh, talking about kind of careers in IT. Yeah. Um, and you got a standing ovation at the end of it. I mean, it's a great thing. So, you know, uh, when I was on Geek Whispers and, uh, you know, they were talking about my career path, I'm like, it's a little bit of an odd one. And they're like, Stu, they're all odd ones. There is no, you know, in our generation, it's not, you know, I grew up in New Jersey and I knew people that, you know, worked for AT&T for, you know, 30, 40 yeah. years and stuff like that. I was like, I'm never going to work for them. Well, I worked for Lucent, actually, sure. A couple of years after they spun sure. out, so you know, it used to be the come person that sat at one desk, and the company's changed. Now it's you know everything changes all, right. all yeah. the time. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, what conversation do you have with people? What, what, what's you know, we, we don't have a ton of time, but sure. what, what's the what are the big questions you're getting asked, and what's the advice you're giving? I think, so things are changing really quickly, right? And we see guys like uh, Kenny Coleman, who have spent 18 months essentially reinventing their careers, and for a lot of people, they look at that and it's intimidating, right? There's so much to learn. What direction do I want to go? I have things I need to have from a career. I have things that I want to do. And what I try to explain to people is there is no wrong answer, right? And, and if you step back from it and everybody says, I don't know what I want to be when I grow up, none of us do. What do you want to be now, right? What is it right now that you feel like you could throw yourself into and that you could have enough passion for that you're going to push yourself through the learning and, and adoption curve and those things to become you know, right. a useful part of that Next ecosystem. And if that changes every two here. years, Bigger it changes every two years, right? Trying to put a, uh, trying to put a pin in there and say, and I want to be this for the rest of my life in Bigger our goal. industry, it's, it's limiting at yeah, best, yeah. and I think um, yeah, it's, yeah. it's kind of blocking yeah. yourself off from a significant number of both career opportunities from a, you know, from a financial and a growth standpoint, and but also yeah, just from a go learn cool so, stuff. Uh, like, yeah, so oh, I, I hate to do it, but can I poke a little bit at that? Yeah. Because look, I'm with that. you. It's like I, I read Gaping All Void right. and it says, yes. yeah, you know, find what you're passionate about, work more on it, you know, yep. iterate, iterate, yep. iterate. There's people that go to work. Yep. And they do their job. As, yep. as a, I had a manager once that said, there's people Don't that will wait until it. the you know, amusement park you know, comes to a complete stop and they're yep. told to leave and then they'll get out. And there's those of us that'll you know, run around and yep. go from one to the thing to the next. So um, you know, what about the people that you know, I, I'm happy you know, doing my you know, configuration today and sure. managing my well, environment? Everybody wants something different out of it. Yeah. Right? I mean, everybody, um, I know lots of really smart people who work from nine to five and they use that job and their enthusiasm for it to fund the rest of their life. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. What I think you and I know is that there's a large group of community people that, um, that we're involved with on a regular basis where that's not enough. It's not enough for me to have something that um, you know, that checks the boxes that I need to and then I have to go find a hobby. Like this is my hobby. This is when I'm not when I'm not on the cube with you talking about this, I'm in the hallway with somebody talking about this, or I'm on a plane with somebody talking about this. Um, and my job, and I think all of our jobs, is to transfer enthusiasm. My job is to be passionate enough about something that I can transfer that enthusiasm to you and make you want to be more educated, more involved with the community or the technology or the vendor or whatever it is that we're doing. Um, I don't, I mean, I, sometimes I wish that I could just, you know, punch out at five o'clock and not worry about the, you know, the job for the rest of the day, but I'm, I'm not built that way. And so uh, my job is to always find something that I am passionate enough about that I can share that enthusiasm without, without emptying the well. Awesome. So, so yeah, Jeremiah, you're still relatively new at, at, at this job, but it's brand new year. You know, what, what excites you for 2015? You know, is it Docker? Is it, you know, NoSQL databases and Hadoop and all this yep. stuff? Is it, you know, deep into coding? Is the, you know, everybody's becoming coders again, it seems. Yeah, yeah, yeah everything old is new again. Yep. Um, I think that, I think that we have as an industry, not just storage and not just 
uh, public cloud and not just these individual technologies, we have at our disposal as an industry so many ways to tie the workload and the performance and availability and needs of those workloads back to any number of infrastructure constructs. And my hope is that we really start to see some of those become easily accessible, be that platform as a service or infrastructure as a service or private cloud or VMware or OpenStack or whatever the, um, whatever the expression is of where that, that application runs, we have more tools and weapons in the shed today to be able to match up what the end user and the customers need out of the application with what it is that we provide from an infrastructure construct than we ever have, I think we've just uniformly done a pretty poor job of exposing one to the other, right? There's this whole group of people who fill that void who have to try to translate from, I'm an SAP user, I'm an Oracle user, or I'm a web app user into, I'm an infrastructure buyer and I'm an infrastructure administrator. Um, my hope is that with many of the technologies you talked about and others, but even the big guys, the VMwares and the Oracles, that we start to shrink that gap of translation, because I think if we do, you know, it ends up making those applications perform that much better. Yeah, no, gr great point. The, the, uh, the application's at the center for all we've done on the application, <coughs> on, on the infrastructure side. Um, it's actually one of the things, I haven't talked about Docker much today, um, but what gets me excited that's, about that's Docker is the unit of measurement. Sure. For Docker, is it's the application. It is putting the app front yep. and center. It's not, you know, some box. It's not even a VM, which was a construct that you know did great things. Right. But it's 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 the app. It's a yep. single app. It's not Linux containers was really about a bunch of stuff. Docker's single app. Yep. Put it in a hub. Do some really cool things. Yep. Um, it's early days, but that that's why you know I'm seeing oh. startups and it's, other people tying yeah, in. Yeah, and, and it's it's the weird math that is enterprise infrastructure, right? On one hand, the smaller the unit of measure the more granular we can be about consumption and provisioning and all the things that are important from an operation standpoint. But from a, um, from a business standpoint, the larger the denominator, the more capable I am of consuming everything at scale. Right, so the more, um, the more virtualized I am or the, um, the bigger the pool is that I can provision into, there's this odd dichotomy between, um, from an economic standpoint, I want things to have as much scale as I can hence AWS and all of these things that are designed to share cost across multiple customers, but from a consumption metric, I want it to be as infinitesimally small as possible, and I will put the Legos together however that workloads needs them. Um, we all live in between kind of those two yep. poles. Yeah, yeah. J Jeremiah, distributed architecture is absolutely number one thing on, on my radar is where it fits. Uh, if only we had really good quality of service across the board to help with those infinitesimal things. So yep. really appreciate you yep. joining. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Solid Fire is a company, you know, we keep a close eye on. All right, we're, it's going to be a wrap for now. Um, we're going to be right back uh, with, with our wrap up with John MacArthur. Uh, it's been a great day here at VTUG uh, event. Uh, thanks for watching, we'll be right back.